Welcome everybody to the Church of the Tone Priest. We've got a couple of really cool projects coming up in the near future, including this. And this. What could this be? But we need to place a couple of orders for parts before we can move on to those. So it's Sunday afternoon, and I was thinking, uh, what can we do today? And I thought we'd um, finish up the little odds and ends that need to be done on our Crestline Gibson GA5T amplifier. So, we've got a bunch of parts here. We've got some finishing washers, we've got some feet, um, handle clamps. And also, when I was recording, or when I recorded the video for the Hell's Bells pedal, I noticed that there was a little bit of static coming out occasionally. And I think that might be from that speaker. And uh, I was in the uh, storage area and I found this bad boy kicking around. I thought, yeah, this might be a good speaker for that amp. So uh, let's have some fun. Let's uh, finish up the little odds and ends and let's do some speaker experimentation. If that sounds interesting to you and I'm not sure why it would, but if it does... Stick around. Before we get going, I'd just like to thank uh, today's video sponsor, my day job. Check this out, I'm in a Tesla Model X. You could literally, you don't, you don't even need the fucking windshield. You can play the fucking Forza Dash game. Get to where you're going. Hold on, you wait to see a car coming on the other side of the road. Here we go. Get closer to this car. How cool is that? Good times. This car is faster than any fucking car has any right to be. That's all I got to say. Alright, what I really should be doing today is cleaning out the tone church. Because I am constantly misplacing stuff. But anyway, this isn't the handle that I wanted to use. This is a little bit overkill for this amp. It's not that heavy. Uh, but it's the one I can find, so it's the one we're going to use. All right, I'm going to uh, take this all apart. Take the chassis out so we can get access to where the uh, nuts need to go for this handle and uh, install the handle. Let's get a grip on things here. We have the back door off. Pull the chassis out. Now we're going to pull this speaker. And then we'll move on to the installation of the handle. Good stuff. Alright, so we need to determine how far apart we need the holes to drill the holes for the handle. And of course, if you push the handle down, they'll be further apart. And if you make a big U out of it, you know, they'll be closer together. But, um, if we can straighten this out here. So this uh, handle is advertised as a 7-inch handle, and if we measure it, there you go, 7 inches. So we'll put the holes 7 inches apart, and that should have the right amount of bend in it, as it was designed by the manufacturer. The cabinet is 19 and a half inches wide. It's definitely not in focus. So we need 9 and 3 quarters of an inch to be the center line. Get a little bit of parallax error going on here. And then um, the holes we need are supposed to be seven inches apart. So from the center line, it'll be three and a half inches apart. All right, so that's kind of where I want to put it. And I know it looks like it's a little too far forward, but there is a uh, angled edge here. So that's kind of the center line from here to here, not from here to here. And we also have to remember that a lot of the weight, the speaker, the weight of the speaker and the weight of um, the chassis with the transformers is going to be towards the front. So if we were to put this back here to make it look aesthetically more pleasing, you know, when you pick this thing up, it's just going to flop, you know, and be unwieldy. So it's going to go about right there. All right, let's get it there. I'm going to use these threaded um, hammer in bushings to secure the handle. So, we'll go um, make a pilot hole with the 964s from the top. 
and then we'll flip her over and then we'll make a uh, little bit bigger hole almost all the way through from the bottom so we can hammer these guys in. All right, we have the center pilot holes drilled from the top and that's where the screws will go down through from the top and those all seem to line up nicely. So now we need to drill a bigger hole from the bottom for the uh, to hammer in the bushing and we're using a drill stop so we don't blast too far through. All right, I've got you set up on the action cam here. Here's our drill with the drill stop and it goes about halfway through the thickness of the uh, cabinet wood here. And we've got it flipped upside down so this is the top facing down. So, um, yeah, here we go. Wish me luck, you know. The pressure's on, filming, and working at the same time. So if this goes sideways, it's going to be very embarrassing. Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. All right, let's see how that's going to work with one of these bushings. Um, yep, that's the right size hole. Perfect. So let's do the other three. Nice. Let's clean this up a little bit. While we're here, um, some of the extra Tolex is peeling up here. So this isn't needed. So let's get that out of here. Extra piece right here. And these little corners and stuff like to get hung up while you're inserting and removing the chassis so let's get them out of there they are not needed all right clean this up get mr mallet out all right so this is the uh, shittiest looking hole of the bunch so we're going to start with this one Oh yeah, the camera must be shaking like crazy. How awesome is that? Hey, that's even upsetting the tone pet. We're a mess today. Okay, like it, yeah, so Mr. Tripod set up on Mr. Desk and Mr. Hammer is probably making a lot of Mr. Vibrations. So I'm gonna shut you down and I'll show you uh, how we did when I'm done. All right. Get the four uh, bushings in. Now hopefully if all our careful planning went according to plan, uh, this should work. Uh, so it's a little tough to get it going because the Tolex is kind of sealing the hole a little bit. But I think once we get her past the first couple of threads, she'll go right in. There we go. And this bolt's probably going to be a mile too long. That might be okay. It might be fine. There's a bunch of space on the other side before there's anything important on the chassis. Yeah. Yeah, it sticks out past the bottom about a quarter inch. But I think I'm going to leave that because there's plenty, like I said, there's plenty of space. Um,. It's not in any danger of uh, hitting any of the electrical components in the chassis. And then if we want to be even extra secure, we can, it'll, it'll have enough room to even put a nut on there. So uh, I'm going to leave it like that. Plus I'm lazy. That's the real reason. You see that? You getting all that? You know this is riveting entertainment. I'm up to here with this. I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. Who doesn't like watching people screw? Really? Nothing. All right. It's two of four. Oh yeah, baby. You see that?
with a better human league. It's happier, isn't it? It works. All right, I'll put the other two screws in and then uh, we'll do something else. Of course it is. The cash mode. Okay, the hands are all set, so now it's time to turn our attention to the feet. And we're going to use these little rubber feet and these screws. And I uh, kind of eyeballed it. And it looks like um, one inch down and one inch in from every corner seems about right. So I'll mark those off, drill some pilot holes, and then screw these suckers in. All right, there we go. We got a handle. And we've got feet. Hopefully you can see that. It's not too dark. Here we go. All right, so let's uh, play around with some speakers. All right, here's our 1959 Jensen P12S. Uh, this is like a 10 watt speaker, Elnico magnet. Uh, it's also four ohms. It's measuring like 3.8 ohms or 3.2 ohms of DC resistance. The uh, amplifier, the uh, Gibson GA5T Crestline Era, uh, the output transformer is looking for 8 ohms. So this speaker probably isn't going to be the one I use in that amplifier. Uh, it's got a big old tear in it. And it's pretty old and I've uh, played through it once before and it wasn't the greatest sounding speaker in the world. But I'm curious to hear how it sounds. So in order that we don't have a uh, impedance mismatch, we're going to add a uh, 4.7 ohm, you know, high wattage resistor in series. So we'll get that closer to 8 ohms. And the reason you don't want to mismatch impedance from your output transformer and your speaker, um, in this example, the output transformer is looking for an 8 ohm load. If we cut the load in half, resistance goes down, current goes up. So by cutting the uh, the load in half, we're going to uh, double the current going through the output transformer, and that's not good. It's no good. Not good for the longevity of the transformer. Worst case situation using this is we blow up a resistor. But I don't think this sucker would blow. This is a very low-powered amplifier. It's probably 7, 8 watts. 10 absolute maximum if you're really pushing it with a drive pedal or something. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll tack this in. We'll tack the speaker in. We'll see how it sounds. Um, this also has a big old tear in it, so this would need to be repaired as well. But I'm just kind of curious to see what this sounds like with that amplifier. So, uh, that's what we're doing. All right, to test our theory and to test Ohm's Law, we've got the meter set up in ohms, or DC resistance. And I have the negative probe connected to the negative speaker terminal. Now if I just uh, test from the positive to the negative speaker terminal. Get about 3 point, there you go, 3.1 ohms of resistance. Uh, it's DC resistance. Um, impedance is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, if you want to learn more on that, um, use your search function above. So now, if we test with the 4.7 ohm resistor in series, so it's, let's say it's coming from your amplifier, goes in for, to one side of your resistor, comes out the other side of your resistor, goes into the positive terminal of your speaker, goes through the voice coil, and then comes out of the negative terminal of your speaker back into your output transformer. So let's test this now. Hopefully we can get a good connection here. There you go, about 9, 9.7, 9.8 ohms of measured DC resistance. So it's a little bit higher than 8 ohms um, impedance, but that'll be, you know, much friendlier to the output transformer. Science. All right, let's hook up the amp and see how she sounds. Okay, I lied. The way I have this cabinet constructed, the, um, the bolts sticking down for the handle are interfering with us putting the chassis pack in. So I will show you how I'm going to deal with that. All right, if we look at our handle bolts, they are extending about 
a good quarter inch from the bottom, so we need to make these bolts a quarter inch shorter. It's starting to look pretty badass, right? Look at that. All right, just a quick aside here. Um, if you're doing something like this and uh, you have a little bit of Tolex peeling around one of the uh, lips, one of the foldovers like I had from the, uh, the top was good, the front was good, but underneath on the inside of the cabinet was peeling up a little bit on one of the edges. Just grab yourself some of the stuff like this. Just give it a quick spray. Give it a minute or two to tack up and press it down and it dries real quick and should solve your problem. Okay, so our bolts are this long. Can, you, can we see this? Can we focus on this? But they need to be this long. Oh yeah, we're going to win an Oscar for, uh, for something on this video. We need to make our bolts shorter. So many people have wire strippers like this. And they have uh, all these things right here, these threaded uh, holes. And many people don't know what those are for. So we have an 832 bolt that's too long. We find our 832 threaded hole in our wire strippers. And we screw it in. So we need to make it about a quarter inch shorter. This uh, portion, back portion of the jaws here is about an eighth of an inch thick. So we will screw this in until about a little more than an eighth inch is showing on the other side. And then we'll give it a good uh, squeeze. And that's all there is to it. And when you're pulling it out, just uh, go in and out just a little bit. That's what she said. <laughs> in case the uh, threads got a little, you know, twisty and bendy to reform the, uh, the first thread there. And that's it. That's all she wrote. That's all it takes. And if you're really clever and really thrifty, the uh, little piece that came out, Take your Dremel style tool with a uh, thin sanding wheel, cut a slot on one side, probably the uh, slot that you just hacked, and uh, you just made your own 832 set screw for stuff. All right, there they are, all screwed in nice and tight, and that should no longer interfere with the installation of the chassis. All right, we got the 19, what do we say, 59? Elnico Jensen P12S hooked up. Got some rattling. I think that has to do with the tear.
sounds freaking amazing, I gotta say. I think we're going to, um, I think I'm going to leave this speaker in here for a little while and play around with it. So uh, I'll take it out and uh, repair the tear with the black goop. And uh, yeah, it sounds really nice. I bet mic'd up that that was going to sound, this amp's going to sound amazing. Um, not too keen on having to use that, that resistor in series to get the proper loading on the uh, output transformer. But, uh, you know, hey, it's what it is. Maybe we'll look on Reverb to find a... Uh, an 8 ohm version of that speaker because it sounds amazing. All right, uh, last little bit we need to do is uh, put the dress washers here and some on the back door, and uh, she'll be uh, done-ish. I mean, done other than the you know stuff I like to do around here, which is to play around with these things and try different things. So uh, I'll do that, and then I'll show you how it looks uh, all buttoned up, and we'll call it a day. All right, there's the last little thing right there. We put the dress washers on the um, speaker baffle. I'm going to turn this guy down. Uh, yeah, this, this whole project um, I couldn't be happier with. Um, she came out better than I was expecting her to. She looks really nice. But um, there you go. Thanks for uh, watching today's video where we address the four humors of amp repair. Hands, feet, lungs, and... Um, finish washers so hopefully we will see you real soon we got a bunch of really cool projects coming up and uh rock on dudes and dudettes <laughs>